What is up everybody, welcome back to Mount Mograf Summit 59, the low poly backgrounds inside Adobe After Effects and Maxon Cinema 4D Lite. This summit has a long title and a short lesson, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a very fun technique and you can create some really fun and unique backgrounds for your, or wallpaper for your computer. If you go ahead and create a new composition in Adobe After Effects, I got Adobe After Effects CC 2014, you can go ahead and right click in your project window down to New Maxon. On Cinema 4D file, save this wherever you'd like. I'm going to save it to my desktop and replace the current untitled C4D document I have open, and it'll automatically open up Cinema 4D Lite R16 if you have the Creative Cloud license. Otherwise, it'll open up Max on Cinema 4D if you have that. Let's go ahead and get this project rolling. If you go up into your primitives and drag anything out that you like, I'm going to go ahead and start with a cube. We're going to delete our Fong tag so we can easily create some low poly objects. If we go into our segments here, let's set a 10 for all our X, Y, and Z segments and go up into your display and actually set this to Garand Shading Lines so we can see our segments. If you go ahead and make this object editable by clicking C on your keyboard, we're going to go ahead and add a deformer to get this low poly abstract look. If you hold shift and go into your deformers, we're going to select the twist option and click fit to parent and maybe scale it up a little bit by pressing T on your keyboard for the scale tool. Next we're going to click our twist property and go into our angle and just turn this up a little bit. I'm going to crank mine up to 162. Next holding command let's grab our twist object and drag it out so we have a duplicate twist object. Make sure it is a child of the cube. We're going to press R on our keyboard for a rotation tool and rotate this. Uh, 90 degrees so we get this crazy shape like this next go into your second twist property and just change the value of your angle to really whatever you like I might even uh, turn mine down a little bit to 128 next grab your cube and press T on your keyboard for your scale tool scale this guy up a little bit and let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial quite literally by just moving forward on the object until you're inside of it and as you can see, we have a wonderful uh, low poly look already started. If you double click into your materials down here and go into your color, let's go ahead into our texture and grab a gradient. Click into your gradient and we're going to add uh, four colors, I suppose. Really can be whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to pick some nice bright colors like this and maybe a teal or something. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with this. There's a ton of different stuff. Using different objects and different deformers, you can get a wonderful look. If you go ahead and throw this material onto our cube, it'll texture our cube. And if I do a quick preview, we're starting to get a look. So uh, let's go into our render settings, this option up here. We'll go into our output and set this actually to 1920 by um, 1080. So this will work with our composition in After Effects. And if you go down to um, the panel right here and right click, turn on ambient occlusion. That's going to add some nice shadows to stuff. And then under your anti-aliasing, knock this up to best so we don't have any aliasing. Next up on the list, we're going to go into our light object and just drag a light into the scene. Mine pops up right in the middle. We're going to go to our type and set it to area. Our shadow, we're going to go and set to area. Next, jump into your details and we're going to go and down to the fall off tap option. Set this to inverse square, physically accurate. Press T on your keyboard for your scale tool or this button up here. Scale it down a bit until you start to get some colors and just move the light over in the scene. We're going to go and duplicate this light holding command on your keyboard and dragging out on the arrows for the move tool and set this one somewhere on the other side. Maybe scale it down a little bit and go into your light object into your general tab and change your color to something else. Change mine to a nice honey yellow. And let's go ahead and take a preview of what this is looking like. Real quick preview and you can see we're starting to get a cool low poly abstract background or wallpaper. So if we go ahead and just save this project and hop back into our uh, After Effects, you're going to see it update in the project window. If I drag this untitled.c4d doc into our new composition, it'll pop up here and it's not going to look quite the same as it did in our project. In your effect controls, go into your renderer and set this up to standard final and it will update to the... Uh, um, one we just preview rendered in Cinema 4D. 
So once this is all processed, it's processing right here. Sometimes this can be slow, but for a quick background like this, I thought I'd use the Cineware Lite. You can also just render it out from Cineware and drop the image into After Effects like that. So while this is importing, what we're gonna do next is add a quick texture over the top to finish this off. As you can see, uh, it's coming together just like this. If I double click into my Material Manager, on my desktop I have a uh, texture somewhere, I thought I did. Maybe I'll hop into my Textures folder and grab a paper and I will just drop this paper object above my untitled Cinema 4D thing. Maybe rotate my paper and scale it up a little bit here. And then I'll just turn my opacity down and in no time at all, we have a wonderful, nice, hip, and trendy, abstract, low-poly background. So this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. I hope you enjoyed today's summit. Got some cool stuff coming out very, very soon. Thanks for holding your horses, and keep rocking on. Peace out.